Hello and welcome to Stand in the Gap. I'm Sam Rohr, and I'm going to be joined in just a moment by Pastor Isaac Crockett as we conclude our two-part presentation, this being principle number five, the purpose for law, as we continue in our journey through the Ten Principles to National Renewal. We also refer to this as uh, God's plan for a blessed nation. Uh, these ten principles, identified by our founders, lifted right off the pages of Scripture, remain today the only solution to the lawlessness, the bribery, and the corruption of modern American culture and government. Now, each of these ten principles, from principle number one, the foundation of integrity and virtue, to principle number five that we're dealing with now and concluding here on today's program, the purpose for law, which is the tool of government, all of these are essential. None can be left out. Each one builds on the other like precept upon precept, stone upon stone. Truth being the cornerstone, the foundation of any person or family or nation which ever expects to be blessed of God. So if you want to be blessed of God, you have to start with truth and follow God's plan. See, only when truth is pursued and integrity and virtue laid down as the foundation, as in principle number one, and God Himself recognized as Creator, sovereign, and supreme authority, perfect in holiness and justice, that was principle two, can it then be understood how the nature of man is so fallen, sinful, bent to evil, from birth, deserving of God's judgment, that's principle three. But then when understood, then we understand the purpose for government and why God began to delegate authority answerable to Jesus Christ, ultimately as King of kings and Lord of lords. Can it be understood, really, as to government's limited purpose? And that is to praise those who do well, punish those who do evil, enact, effectively enact justice. That was principle four. That brings us to where we are right now, the conclusion of it, that God's purpose for government is to le execute legitimate law, to provide a framework for society to, con to control lawbreakers. See, at that point, now you can begin to understand how these fit together. And that is now what we're talking, principle five. However, when it comes to identifying and making legitimate law, that law must comport with God's moral law, which is universal, unchanging and which there is no exception, applies to all. You see, there are laws which enslave men. There are laws which set men free. The question is, will we as people hold to that which is right and good and true for just ourselves only, or hold to that which God defines as right and good and true, and say it applies to all mankind because it was established by God in His law, by the Creator God, the lawgiver, the judge, the king of the world? Well. Our founders dealt with this question, and they held to it that this was a universal law and precept. They viewed these identified rights as coming from, as you recall in the Declaration, our Creator. With these rights, they said, being self-evident for anyone who wants to look, for all, man, for all mankind is what they said. And as our Declaration signer said, for the purpose of protecting these sacred rights based on the law of God, governments are instituted among men. And herein is the direct nexus between God, government, and law. So, what are the constraints upon law, and what is God's design for the proper response to law? We'll deal with those in today's program. Isaac. Uh, it's a common uh, statement. I've heard it a lot when I was in office, but everybody's heard it. Everybody's listening to me, they've heard this. Uh, people say, don't dare bring your religion into office. <laughs> uh, or, don't legislate morality. You can't do that. Well, I'll just answer that question. Can one legislate morality? <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way to have legislation. You don't have law without morality. What is morality? Morality is right and wrong behavior, or right and wrong conduct, whether a school or a civil government, um, you have to have a morality, a, a base that you're going off of. And, and from the very beginning, as you've referenced, God created mankind in His image. He created us with a plan. He had a purpose for this creation. He didn't create us just to sit around like a, a bump on a frog and just, you know, be there along for the ride. He created us to do things. 
And so he gave Adam and Eve things to do and, and to, 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 to accomplish. He also said, here's a law for you as well, don't do this. All these fruits you can have, this one tree, don't eat that. So from the very beginning, that's part of having purpose, is having that structure, that order that we keep going back to. So, so really what you're saying, I mean, I said this, but you can tell me what you think about it. In the end, as you say, it's not a matter if a law involves some morality. The question is, whose? Is it <laughs> exactly. God's or is it mine, right? Exactly. And I've taken linguistics yeah. classes and soci sociology classes. And if you think that you can't legislate morality, you don't understand language or, or history at all because that's exactly what it is. And so you're right. It goes down to whose morality are we talking about? We have a lot more to talk about. Uh, the two of us, we want to talk about the Ten Commandments and more as we go on. We're going to take a quick time out and be right back. Truth, flexible or permanent? The Bible, ancient history, or powerfully relevant? Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs? The pastor, commentator, or frontline combatant? Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter with hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide. A website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution. Educating, informing, equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Sam, we, we started this program out by saying, you know, this, this idea that you can't legislate morality. That doesn't even make sense because legislation, laws are morality. But the key that you brought in was whose morality are we going to follow? Um, you know, and, and we could go into that. But God has given us law. And uh, when we talk about the law, we talked about this on the last program, we often think of the Decalogue, the, the Ten Commandments written in stone for us. Um, can you maybe go into that? Help As we talk about law, can you maybe help us understand how the Ten Commandments relate to law as we know it in a nation like America? Um, I, I can, Isaac. I'll just be very, very simple in this regard. The Ten Commandments, God's Ten Decalogue Moral Laws, have always been the basis for American law. Mm. It is the basis for Western law. The concept that those Ten Commandments, starting with, have no other gods before me, and then going all the way down through, honor thy father and thy mother, to number six, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill, number six, to all the way to thou shalt not covet. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all there. See, all of those, put another way, the concept of the Ten Commandments as coming from God the authority and what we described, God is, God created, sin came, redemption is God's idea, biblical worldview. Those concepts are distinctively Western law. We all sometimes refer to it as a Judeo-Christian worldview. Mm. But that is why at one point in time, Isaac, um, uh, the Ten Commandments, and in still most cases they're still there, hang behind every courtroom in America because that is the basis for our law. Um, it's an amazing that anybody would stand up today and say that God had nothing to do with the founding of America. Um, that our law, you don't bring up, don't bring up morality when we talk about thou shalt not kill. Are you kidding me? Uh, don't bring up the idea thou shalt not covet when we talk and we witness bribery and corruption in office today. Or thou shalt not steal when, frankly, legalized theft is occurring as we speak every time those in office on our state or federal level vote taxation from the people for things not the purposes of government. It is theft. Oh, it's all moral. 
Mm-hmm. Matter of frankly, it's all immo- most of it's immoral, <laughs> right? All right, but <laughs> but the Ten Commandments as a framework of universal moral law, because they come from God, they never change. So no matter what civilization in the history of the world, whether it is Korea or Japan or or Russia or the United States, from God's perspective, they're all going to answer to Him on how they deal with the moral law. And, uh, and so what has man attempted to do in this nation that's rebelled against God? You get rid of the Ten Commandments. Mm. And of course we know they did that back in the 20th century. <laughs> it seems like a long time ago, right? Uh, um, the judge ruled, the court ruled, it was not proper to have the Ten Commandments hanging on the walls of our public school classrooms. And they said in the court case, literally Isaac, they said, that the word, they, they said this, if those Ten Commandments are hanging there, it's possible that a child may read them. Yeah. And if they read them, they, they, they may venerate them or do them. They said, this is not permissible. So now we have no Ten Commandments on the halls. Obviously our children can't read them, therefore they certainly can't do them. And we wonder why we have trouble. Well, we're going to back all the way. Our founders said, William Penn said, and, and those that were around that point when they were laying out, can it, is it possible to come up with this holy experiment in freedom of self-government under God? Um, and they went to the Old, the Old Testament and they went to Deuteronomy and they looked at all the things we're talking about in these principles. They said this, that this concept of a self-government under God could only happen if the people individually submitted themselves voluntarily to the Ten Commandments of God. Mm. And those who would be coming into office would limit their actions in office according to God's Ten Commandments. You see, Isaac, we can't get away from it. God's blessings are linked to God's law. Justice in government is linked to God's law. Any law which counters God's law is illegitimate law and brings great harm. To the extent that we mirror what God says, freedom can happen, justice will occur, and God's blessings will flow. That's pretty much what it is. Now let me go here. Now, there are people, there was, it, existed, it existed back then, Isaac, even with the king, and, the, and it was, became a matter of discussion in the days of our founder, where uh, there was a problem with the king would make law. He was everything. He made the law, he enforced the law, he interpreted the law, and there was a problem because he thought he was above the law. That was a problem. So what's, what's a principle there that uh, they put into effect that we ought to remember today? Yeah, that, that Lex Rex principle, I think the um, law over king, uh, goes way back even before King George, and it goes back even into Bible times. But it, it's so ridiculous when people try to hide from these things. It's like a little child trying to close their eyes and say, I don't see you, so therefore you don't see me. God sees it all. And when kings behave this way, where they don't put the law above themselves, they think that somehow, like you said, they can create and enforce a law, but they are not held responsible by it. Um, And it's not just kings. You see it all the time in government. Lower levels of government, higher levels of government, and enforcement of it as well, um, where people think that uh, they are above the law. If it's a father in the home or a mother that uh, they tell their kids to obey certain things, but they do different things, it totally corrupts what God has put their authority there for, and it can turn their kids against all sorts of types of authority. And it goes all the way up the line, all the way to governors and presidents. If they don't obey the law, if they're not under the law, it can corrupt the whole system. And, uh, and that is what we would call a tyrant. A tyrant is one mm-hmm. who thinks that he or she doesn't have to obey the law. They can, they can do everything else, but they don't have to obey the law. Um, and, and that's not how God designed it. God's design was His authority is then mitigated out through these other authorities and it keeps going. But all these authorities answer to Him. Um, how is this, uh, maybe you could kind of take us through ex- um, explaining that, you know, what, why God put that there in such a way, this God of order. Well, 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 Isaac, God laid it out, but I, before I go there to say, because there's conflict that occurs, but I want you to, if you, if you don't mind, can you pursue this just a little bit more? Because you're talking about the fact that no one is above the law, mm-hmm. the Lex Rex. 
That's important because, it, because in the administration of law, we should be pointing to the God of heaven exactly. being under authority. So, the Scripture does speak about the law and a purpose of the administration of the should do something mm -hmm. uh, in it. Explain that, if you don't mind here. Right. Okay. So, in the New Testament, Paul, uh, who was such a legalist, uh, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, he loved the law. And again, we're referring to biblical laws, the Ten Commandments and, and the Old Testament laws. Uh, and he gets transformed, completely changed. Paul, the Apostle now, and um, he writes to the Galatians, he says that the law was our schoolmaster. It was there to mm -hmm. teach us things about God and to, you know, keep us as kids from, you know, going into our own demise. But he said it was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And you can read this in, in Galatians chapter 3, uh, verses 24, 25, and even into 26. Um, he says, but after faith is come, that's we are saved, we put our faith in Jesus Christ. So Jesus came and He fulfilled the law and He, he had victory over all that and gave us salvation through Him. Um, since then, the, the schoolmaster brought us to Him. He says that faith has come, uh, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. But see, but see Isaac, the, the idea there again, it, 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 this is all part of God's plan of redemption in a biblical so, worldview, mm -hmm. all ties back into exactly what we've talked about, God as Creator perfect, man as a sinner in need of, but God being just. The law does it in some respects, uh, the Lord speaks to us about, the, the idea that the law was created for the law, law breaker, but it ultimately doesn't that it show us that no one can keep the law? I mean, I think of when Christ, exactly. when Christ came on the, uh, uh, and, and spoke on the Sermon on the Mount, he brought, he brought up all of the Ten Commandments. But then he was looking around some of these hypocrites around there and he said, aha, you think that you haven't killed somebody. You, you think that you can earn your way to heaven. You think you're perfect? Let me just tell you right now. Are you angry? Have you been angry with somebody in your heart for unrighteous reasons? Well, if you have, you're guilty of murder because you've killed your brother. Uh, have you uh, looked around, you man who think you're perfect? Uh, have you ever lusted after a woman? Well, I haven't committed adultery. Oh no, you've committed adultery in your heart, so you've sinned. The point being, nobody can keep the law. We are guilty before God. So the schoolmaster of the law helps to then direct us to the fact that we can't help ourselves. Right, so continue on that. Right, right. Yeah, and that's that what up. brings us. You said the word redemption. That brings us back to the grace of God that mm -hmm. He forgives and He restores. Redemption is that restoration then of how God had originally made us before Genesis chapter three, before the curse, and it all comes full circle. And so that's where God's law actually points us to God and to a way of salvation uh, from our own selves, from our own sin. Um, and bringing that just real quickly, I know something you talk about a lot, a question you get often is what do we do when there's a conflict between God's law and man's law? What if, what if man-made laws uh, tell us to do something differently than what God said or, or forbid us from that? Uh, Isaac, we could spend hours and hours on this. Mm -hmm. uh, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Isaac's question. I'm gonna, let me try to answer it just briefly like this. Um, laws, the laws of God, can, also, can often be conflicted with unjust laws of man. Now they can, I, I'm too broad for me to get into super detail here right now. Other than this, there is a principle that says we should obey God rather than man. God is over Caesar, the law. I'll just take you back to Romans 13. You study the passage out, and we talked in the last uh, program about God the Father having established authority. He ranked them. Be subject to the higher powers. R ranking of authority. God ordained and ranked authority. The point being here, every person is ultimately accountable and responsible to the God of heaven. When the government of Babylon told Daniel that he could not pray, Daniel obeyed God and continued to pray. Then I meant he also disobeyed the civil law, but it meant he was obeying God. The priority of authority. Child is watching. A child says, well, my teacher in the classroom told me to do that I could steal a pencil. 
or I could take a pencil because it was all right, even though my, my neighbor across the aisle uh, didn't know about it. But mom and dad at home says, no, you can't do that because that's stealing, because God said thou shalt not steal. Well, the teacher is an authority, but God is the higher authority. So does the, stu does the student have a responsibility or have an ability to steal? No, because they're ultimately responsible to God as the higher authority and his parents as a higher authority than the teacher in the classroom. This is a balance, prioritization of authority Always the higher authority prevails, just like in the military, same in God's economy. When we understand that principle, it helps us to decipher a great deal when we say no to something that government says, when government may say something which is counter to what God has said. Isaac, that'll be my brief answer to your question. We'll be right back. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV positively different television. Sam, we've gone through now, this is the second part, the second program on um, the law, the biblical purpose for law, and that is number five in the 10 steps for national renewal, the 10 steps uh, towards turning our nation around, or at least our lives personally around. There are things that we can be doing. We don't just throw our hands up and say there's nothing to do. We can do these things to see our nation renewed, um, but this is number five. So. We're at the end of the program. We're running out of time. Maybe you can kind of take it and tie it into to where we've been going through and uh, the programs that are left to come yet. Uh, Isaac, I, I think as we're saying, if, if, if those who are watching us today can, can understand and in a series can understand that these principles that we are identifying start with truth. Hmm. It starts with we have to understand who God is. We have to go that direction. Fear God. And then we have to determine to keep His commandments. It's Ecclesiastes 12, 13, we talked about that. The whole duty of man, at the end of the day, what's the whole duty of man? Fear God, keep His commandments. The results are, there are wonderful blessings that come as a consequence of fearing God and worshiping Him, keeping mm -hmm. His commandments. But on the other hand, there are extraordinary harm and damage and judgment. God calls them cursings in Deuteronomy 28 that will occur and fall down on people and nations when they say, we've got a better way. Mm. And that's the temptation of man because man is sinful in his heart. And that'll actually lead us into the principle number six that we'll start with next week. And uh, that, that deals with the tendency of government, mm. the tendency of those in authority. And I'll just tell you briefly where it goes, the tendency of all of those in authority is to consolidate power because you'd never have enough. It's like the person who worships money. You'd never have enough, right? Those who are in positions of authority who don't understand that they are under authority as ministers of God, Romans 13, will seek to, and this is what our founders, Penn talked about this, and our founders talked about it, they will seek to consolidate power and they will seek to usurp the worship of God. Government always seeks to become God. That's what we see today in policies coming out of government. We want to make people dependent. I don't, but there are people who want to make people dependent on government by saying there is no God. Throw out His Ten Commandments. Don't pray. Redefine marriage. Redefine human sexuality. Who makes the determination then? We will. We'll tell you. We'll tell you what you ought to do, what you ought to think, what you ought to stick in your arm. Um, they become God. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's how all these pieces fit together. I'm glad that you've been watching us uh, today, and hopefully that uh, some of what we have said uh, so far in this series 
uh, has been helpful. I encourage you to go back. You can find all of these programs. Watch them again. Share them with your friends. Uh, uh, perhaps let them know that God's Word does lay out everything we need for even these perilous days in which we live. God's blessings have always been certain for those who fear Him and keep His commandments. I pray that you will make that commitment uh, this week. Again, pray for us. Uh, consider uh, partnering with us financially so we can continue to get this information out for the glory of God.